Welcome to day 5 of DLF Multispecies Focus Week. Some of the benefits highlighted about multispecies swords include increased dry matter production and reduced nitrogen fertilizer costs. Today we'll see if Kevin and Carl have seen any of these benefits while they've been using the mixtures for the last year. All this week we're giving you the chance to win 5 acres of seed for yourself and a friend. Just follow the posts on our social media to see the details on how to enter. For summaries and fact sheets on all the information covered each day, follow the link to our website. Don't forget you can contact us directly with any questions that you might have throughout the week. What do you think are the main barriers to farmers incorporating multi-species on their, on their farms? One of the biggest ones is that it's new and farmers are they're just used to grass and clover. Uh, like persistency is one of the biggest uh, biggest doubts I suppose with farmers and like if it if it doesn't persist you're still left with your grass and clover you know your grass and clover is going to grow in your farm um, so you're still left with that. So have you seen any cost benefits in incorporating multi-species here like increases in milk yield or reduced um, reduced input costs? It worked for us it's like with the fertilizer savings it's a no-brainer for us we'll win more next year and a lot more next year hopefully. Kind of instead pretty much the same but it's at the other end um, that I'm looking for that's the input. So we haven't put any fertilizer on these paddocks since they went in. And they're, as I said, they're, they're growing in the 21 day rotation. They're, they're coming in the same as the grass swords with fertilizer. Um, yeah, it's the, it's the health end of it as well, that there's minerals, more minerals coming to the cows from the chicken plantain. And um, yeah, from the, 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 it's the bull tank. If the bull tank stays level, I'd be happy enough because you're saving, like we'll probably save four rounds of fertilizer on this uh, since it went in and it's, grow, as I said, it's growing the same as the rest of the paddocks with fertilizer. What do you think are the main barriers uh, to multi-species swords for, for most farmers? Uh, I'd be saying, I guess, that, the, that like as farmers, especially we'll call ourselves conventional farmers, we're used to putting in ryegrass and we spread our fertilizer maybe whatever every three to four weeks and it's, it's just what you do and it's normal and you know that the grass is going to grow. So this is like, a new step into the unknown where you actually set this and you can actually walk away from it. You don't need to set or you don't need to spread fertilizer. So you have to have that confidence to give the clovers and the herbs and everything their chance to actually work their magic, we'll call it, and actually let it, let it grow that way. So I would say that's one of the big barriers is it kind of it's almost probably more of a mental thing with, with us farmers is can this really work? Like, do I not need to be spreading as much nitrogen, but still have the same tons of dry matter produced? So it's just to get over that barrier, I'd say, is probably the, the biggest blocker we all have at the moment. Have you learned anything yourself about managing multi-species source from your own on-farm experiment here? Um, what I would say is the, the one big thing I've learned this year is that you can actually let them grow that little bit further, probably than ryegrass, and you can have a heavier cover in there. And the cows will actually come in and absolutely skin the paddock very very happy on it when they're in there. So in the six months that you've had the multi-species sword have you noticed any benefits? So since I have uh, set the multi-species here as I say it got a little bit of tint in 20 on receding since then it's got absolutely zero nitrogen since the, the, the start of June so I mean the production from zero nitrogen is just amazing that I'm getting here like it has been growing just as much as new reseeds of perennial ryegrass that are on paddocks here in the same field. Um, looking at the cow's performance, let's say they're very, very happy on it. They're milking as well, if not even better when they come in here eating it. So it's almost like a win-win. So I'm saving on my nitrogen bill. I'm saving on time because I don't have to drive around the field spreading the nitrogen. And the cows are definitely performing as good, if not better, while eating the multi-species. From my experience of what's happened this year anyway, I'm definitely going to be setting more. So next year, any receding I'm doing on this farm, I'm definitely going to put multi-species in. This is probably the first multi-species kind of in the locality that has been sat. So it is a big difference to when you usually reseed and you have your obviously your lovely clean field of perennial ryegrass there's a lot of different species growing in here so it's definitely been a bit of talk with the neighbors of what is happening i've heard comments of why am i growing a, a field of docks but uh, thankfully they say there's there's no docks in here and it's funny like that in groups probably uh, you'll hear a lot of those comments but actually when you're talking to farmers one-on-one -on -one, they're actually very interested to see how this is getting not getting on and i would say that there is a lot of interest building out there that if this actually can do as much as what it looks like it can, I would expect a lot of farmers will be growing multi-species on their farms. Throughout the week we've gotten insights from farmers and research on some of the benefits associated with multi-species swords and how we can manage these swords on our farms. I just want to summarise a couple of key points that you should keep in mind if you're planning on sowing a multi-species sword this year. And don't forget you can contact us with any queries that you might have throughout the year. So firstly if we consider establishment. Once we have our soil fertility in check, the most effective way to establish a multi-species sward is with a full reseed. This allows for weed control and gives the new plants the best chance to establish. As we learned from our trip to Johnstown Castle 
and also from Kevin and Carl. Once we get a good establishment of our grass legume and herbs, there should be minimal opportunity for weeds to get established. A more cost effective method of establishment may be to oversow the legumes and herbs into an existing grass sward like Kevin O'Hanlon did in County Wexford. It is important to graze the sward tight before broadcasting to reduce competition from the grass and to keep the sward open until you see germination of the new seedlings. So secondly, like perennial ryegrass swards, rotational grazing will best lead to better sward quality and utilisation than long periods of grazing. So ideally we want to graze our mixtures for one to three days and this will help to prevent selective and overgrazing of the more palatable herb and legume species in the mixture. It is generally recommended to graze multi-species swards to between four and six centimeters and to increase the rotation length compared to perennial ryegrass. This is to prevent overgrazing the herb species and increase their persistence over time in the mixture. We hear many examples of multi-species swards being grazed tight in the 21 day rotation. However, we don't know what the long-term effect of such a management regime will have on the persistence of the mixture. It'll be interesting to see the results of the systems research at UCD from the Smart Sword project. One of the biggest attractions of using multi-species mixtures is the ability to reduce our nitrogen fertilizer input and the associated costs that come with it. The exact amount you reduce your fertilizer by depends on your own situation, but research shows that legumes can fix up to 300 kilos of nitrogen per hectare per year. Another point to consider is that large applications of nitrogen during the summer will reduce the diversity and thus the productivity and environmental benefits of your multi-species sward. The ability to significantly reduce nitrogen input is one of the main attractions of multi-species swords, and this can seriously improve the profitability of a farm system. Furthermore, with artificial nitrogen being a serious polluter of the environment, a sward that can reduce nitrogen input is a win-win for both farmers and the environment. Thank you for joining us for our DLF Multi-Species Focus Week. All of the content can be watched back on our website or social media channel. If you would like further information on multi-species swords, then please contact us directly. All this week, we're giving you the chance to win five acres of seed for yourself and a friend. Just follow the posts on our social media to see the details on how to enter. For summaries and fact sheets on all the information covered each day, follow the link to our website. Don't forget, you can contact us directly with any questions that you might have throughout the week.